today we're going to be looking at 0.7.5 beta of Starforge and that boy have they changed a lot with this update so I'm just going to start a map I have had experience with this map so, and I think it offers a good range for showing us uh, the basics of the game and how to survive through that first night so if you want to play along just enter in that seed name with the exact same capitalization and you should get the exact same map that I do let's get into it Okay, the first thing you notice with the new game is, oh my gosh, where are my pants? Oh, okay. Now, we'll get to the beacon. You could spawn anywhere around here, so to help you get your bearings with what I'm doing, we'll uh, get to the beacon and start from there. Now, there's a good range of resources on this map, uh, in reasonably close proximity. The ones we're looking for on the first day are the, uh, principally, well, apart from getting food, and fiber for uh, the injections that we need. It's also we're looking for oil, iron ore and sulfur so that we can get our first projectile weapon going and bullets to shoot from it uh, because you're going to have a lot of trouble getting through the first night and getting rid of the leeches unless you have that gun on you. Now I've got my graphics on the lowest setting possible. I'm still having render issues. That's because my regular computer uh, died on me. I'm using my backup. It's not as good and um, yeah, you will have way better graphics than this if your computer is anything worthwhile. Um, so persevere with me here. Okay, so we get to the vat and what you want to do is travel to this edge of the dark. You should see two trees and a little hill there. One tree there. It shouldn't be floating. There should be some ground under it. There we are two trees there. What you basically want to do is head just to the right of that tree, the solitary tree. And over this rise we'll run into a big lump of iron ore. Now you start with your health injection if you get damaged, your food injection. You'll see down the bottom right there we've got our um, hunger bar, meal bar, appetite bar, I don't know what it's called. Uh, but that takes care of that, and we might just have those now, just so we don't... I always forget and end up getting hurt from the hunger. Okay, here we are. So we've got a big node of iron ore over here. And what we'll do while we add it, go to the fourth item, which is your ground thumper drill, <coughs> and harvest some wood. That'll be for building our first uh, structure. It's going to be really basic. If you've seen my previous tutorial on the previous version, it's pretty much the same thing. It's simple and it's resource efficient and you don't need any extra blueprints for it. It uses exactly what you start with. So, uh, in the last version you started with a chainsaw and made this a lot easier, but uh, we'll just have to do this this slow way. Uh, you can get wood from that stump as well, I'll come back for that. If you come across any of the little um, prey beasts, your wormies or your dapodillos, pick those up as well, because they will give you, uh, like I said, your fiber and your food. So the dapodillos will give you ores, um, and the wormies can give you blueprints for super injections, super size injections, um, or a pistol. That's rarer than the others, but a um, pistol is better projectile weapon than the one you start with. The blueprint. You start with the blueprint for. Okay, basically for the first house you're going to need 130 wood, or 122 to be precise, uh, 130 to cover for accidents, mistakes. Cool. Yep, so just punch it till it's gone. pick up a few trees on your way. It'll just make it quicker and easier when you're ready to build. Now the tutorial tips that were on the last version are gone, um, so I don't know how much you've worked out on, uh, for yourself, but obviously to change between these options you can use your mouse wheel just to scroll, or you can press the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 0 for all of those. This thing here protects your builds. You put that down and you can see there's like a blue dome around you. Anything you do in there will be um, protected from erosion, which is a new feature for this version. Uh, 
this funny flowery type thing is just a beacon if you're playing multiplayer and you need your um, fellows to come help you. Okay, let's get ourselves some beasties. These guys are slow but tough. We'll take a few chomps. Just practice a bit, get your timing right. Slightly glow in the dark, not as much as the whammies, but oh, stay still. God, and he'll freeze. They used to roll away from you, and you had to chase them down hills and stuff. Ugh, it was so frustrating. But they've frozen them for the moment till I fix it up. See, this guy's giving me some ingots of ore, which is handy because the smelter isn't in the game yet, so you can't turn your um basic ores into ingots, you can only get them from either looting them from the bodies of the, um, the beasts, or from the big down spaceship, which you'll see over the rise there, there it is, on this map, hey there, don't go near that yet, because that will damage you quite dramatically with radiation, and also on the first day, you're not likely to see any beasts, uh, or leeches that want to kill you until dusk at least, We know the iron node here somewhere. Where's my bearings? Ah, there it is. That one's closer to the oil and sulfur, so I tend to run for it first. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, when you get a little confidence in the game, you might like to just run up to the spacecraft because there's boxes that are around it. The radiation's not as strong, and you can pick up some pretty cool uh, materials. I've even picked up weapons so I didn't have to worry about forging them. Uh, you can get good blueprints. Yeah. So you'd be confident enough, you can go for that as soon as you get yourself a gun. Now with the iron ore, uh, I recommend getting at least 60, uh, 70. Um, just get as much as you can. I probably won't get that much for this tutorial just for the sake of time. I'll just get 40. What that'll do, that'll give me enough for a gun. You just need one of those wood and 20 of your iron all for the little zip gun. There we go. So, oh yeah, he's already up there in my quick bar. You might like to rearrange this so it's more comfortable for you. I tend to like the drill down here and the gun next to it. Just at one and two. Um, set it for whatever your preferences are, it doesn't really matter. Now, of course, the gun's useless in an unless I craft ammo, and that's where I need the oil and sulfur, so let's get some of that. Now, the difference between this zip gun and the pistol is this one is a single shot item. That's just holding down the right mouse button, gives me a little zoom feature there. It takes a while to reload. Oh, that's right, I've only got one bullet. Um, <coughs> it's a single shot. Uh, it's more powerful than, than when you use the bullets in the um, in the pistol. Like if you shoot a wormy with the zip gun, it takes one good shot, like one well aimed shot, and uh, the wormy will be dead. But he takes three with the pistol. The thing is that uh, what I've heard uh, from the developers is that um, the pistol is more accurate, basically. Uh, so you tend to hit more often what you're aiming at, as long as it's within a, a, a close range. Whereas that zip gun is pretty wild in its directions. Uh, with the oil and um, and sulfur, again 60 uh, is good number. Basically, when you're forging your ammunition, one oil, one sulfur, one iron ore will give you 10 bullets. So uh, just. As long as you've got, you know, 40, 50, 60 of those items each, you're going to have a lot of bullets to play with. While we're here, okay, how many have I got? 32, that'll do for my purposes. Because I'm really just showing you what to do rather than setting myself up for a long night. And uh, the stuff over here on the ground is the yellow sulfur. This is pretty quick and easy to harvest, so feel free to grab a bunch of it. Sorry once again for the rendering issues here. Okay, the good thing about this map is 
sort of up that direction, there's a lot of cliffs, and up on those cliffs are pretty much all of the, the, the special ores that you need for later on, uh, for some of the other um, blueprints that you need to fill in. Okay, how are that blue? Okay, so now we'll see. I've got enough for ammo. What I'll do is I'll just... Just put in ten because I need ten of that iron ore, I think, for another recipe. Now you can see when you when you're doing your numbers here, you can either press the plus or the minus, or you can just type in the number you want for the bigger ones to save you time. Okay, now we've got hundred bullets, and when I arm that gun, you'll see right down the bottom it's got zero and hundred. And now I'll just put one in the chamber. Okay, so we've got the basics there. Now we need to make sure we've got enough wood. I've got sixty, so I need bit more of that and I'm racing the sun now. It's also good to have at least five fiber. Oh, I love these guys. Take that one. Oh, I didn't get a good shot. There we are. Uh, five fiber so that you can make a bedroll. The bedrolls will reset your spawn area so you'll come back to your bedroll rather than spawning over near your beacon. When you get enough resources and you can make a bed, then when you use the bed it'll actually take you to morning, sleep you through to morning. Uh, but the bedroll won't, doesn't have that function. Okay. Let's keep thumping away at this thing. Now you do start with a blueprint for a better drill, but for that you're going to need some few extras. A lot of um, titanium ore, I think it is. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but um, we'll look at it in a future tutorial. I really am enjoying this new um, release. They've added so much to it, created a lot of stuff. I think a lot of it is geared towards your multiplayer modes, but there's still plenty here for a good survival experience. Uh, certainly we can get a cooperative experience uh, with somebody else as well. Get some really fantastic builds, there's so many more materials and uh, things to play with. Uh, it would definitely be better when they get the smelter in. And you'll see why <laughs> as soon as you start playing. Okay, how much what have we got there now? 101. Let's just need a teeny bit more. Just to get ahead of the night time. Oh, there's my first leech. Started, I'm getting a bit close to the ship, I think. Now, apparently, the closer you get to the ship, the more loot you'll find on um, the beasts that you kill. Another great new feature is the AI they've given the leeches. It used to be they would just come for you, and they would stay on you until they got you for good. Now they get distracted, they get bored, so you can outrun them. If you really, if it's just too early to deal with them, uh, they attack the little beasties and throw them in the air. It's quite funny to watch. Uh, okay, I'll just get the 130, but I've probably got enough. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's get building. Uh, we'll, we'll Let's see if we can put there's some reasonable flat space over here, so I'm going to just whack it in here. First thing to do is put down your protective spire. Where are we? Four. Just to protect what we built. First time you forget to do that, you'll know what I mean <laughs> about it when it doesn't work. Okay, we want 16 wood ramps. Take 16 seconds. thing is now we want 100 wood blocks. Now you don't need to leave this window open while it's forging. 
look you'll see it's still building away there even though it's closed so you can get on with other things and try some other things that you need to do maybe collect some more stuff whatever um, take down some beasties uh, the only ex other thing I would have liked at this point is a bit of sand so that I could put a light in the house I'm about to build but Now the only uh, exception to building and closing is when you're building something from a, with a forging terminal, you can close the window but you've got to remain within the forging dome, you know, the space that you require. Let's take out one of these while we're waiting. Come back here. Alright. So let's just click and drag. Quite simple. Ooh, there's a leech. Okay. Nearly, uh, let's make sure my space is still clear of bad guys. Now, turn your flashlight on, just press F. That's going to come up for you. How close are we? This is the hardest part, waiting for the blocks. Maybe in future I might craft 20 blocks and then start building with them and then while crafting more. That's really a cleverer way to do it. Why didn't I think of that before? Okay, here we are. Alright, now with my build, simple build, what we're going to do is start with a block. One, two, three across. And the way I'm building this is I'm just holding down my left mouse button means I can build on the same plane. Okay, just by moving it around, how many is that? So we basically want three blocks by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's fill that in. Nice rectangle. And then add in here. Now if you make a mistake, you just right click but I found out that right click will only work for the last five blocks you placed. If you go away and do something else it just won't work at all. So if you change your mind you better change it straight away. Otherwise it is, um, it's not going to do any good. Okay, I'm going to put a door in here. Oop, that's too far back. I want it at the front. Come on, why don't you go in the front? Try the other end. Does work. Okay, so we've got a door in there. Now we want to put locks around it. One thing I do appreciate about the new release, uh, another thing I appreciate is that the leeches tend to give you a bit of warning now before they bite you in the back. They used to be silent, sneaky things. Now they tend to let out a roar, something, whatever you might call it, a screech. It gives you a little bit of warning, so not furtively checking your back every time you move around. Okay, so we're just basically putting an outer wall on here. Just three blocks high, that's all you need. Now if you had a wall light, it'd be good to put a wall light in here because that means leeches won't spawn inside your space. Fortunately, I'm going to have to be careful of that. So we're just putting some blocks here, I'm just creating some stairs to the ceiling. What this does now is if we build ourselves a bed roll. You might also build yourself one of these later, uh, just a container to put your stuff in. You know, what I can do is I put my bed roll down, wherever the space, and now I've reset my spawn point for here rather than around the spire, the, the vat, whatever you might want to call it, beacon. Okay, so we just do some stairs to the roof. What this means now is that we can s spend the night, uh, any leeches that do come close, we can shoot at them from up here rather than having to tango with them on the ground. Okay. So if one was to come, I could shoot him and he wouldn't reach me. It gives me just that little bit of breathing space, makes it easy to take the night through to the morning. 
Okay, so that's it. That's how to get through your first night. Um, I'll post another video soon, giving some more details on what's next, um, showing you a few more of the, uh, I guess the options, things you can play around with, um, what you might want to do with those ramps. I want to mention that just briefly. This is for, you can do this in the morning or not even bother with this part. I just do this just for a little bit of decoration. Um, it's a bit dangerous at this time of the day, but uh, it just gives you, a, I don't know, just makes it look a little nicer than a square box. You know what I mean? Okay, well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on the Star Forge series.